In the previous module, we have learned about different properties of system. We have seen that systems can be classified into various categories. And the first category that we have seen was based on memory. A system is said to be memoryless if the current value of the output is dependent on only the current values of the input. Similarly, we have seen the condition for causality of the system. A system is said to be causal if the current output is dependent upon the current or the past values of the input. But here the future values are not allowed. So the future values the, or the dependence of the output on future values of the input is not allowed. Similarly, we have defined the systems based on stability. A system is said to be a bounded input bounded output stable or a BBO stable if it satisfies the following. Say if we give the input to be bounded, if we give bounded input, that means the magnitude or the amplitude of the signal to be less than some real finite constant and if it does provide the output that is also bounded then the signal is the system is said to be stable so if a bounded input to the system produces a bounded output then the system is said to be a stable system we have seen the system that is time invariant a system is said to be time invariant if it satisfies the following if the input signal which is shifted results in the identical time shift in the output signal then the system is said to be time invariant similarly we have defined the property of additivity we said that if for verifying the system whether it is an additive system or not we do two experiments we give two inputs and check their individual outputs so say if we give x1 of t we get the output say y1 of t if we give x2 of t as another signal we get output as y2 of t then we try to give both the signals x1 of t and x2 of t together as an addition of both of the signals and we check whether the output the individual outputs are also getting added if that is the case and this must be true it is important to note that this must be true for all the values of t and for all types of x if that is the case then we say that the system is additive we have defined the systems to be homogeneous if the scaled input produces the scaled output and here we allowed the scaling factor c to be a complex variable all a complex constant also so this must be true for all the values of t and for all the values of c the c here here is allowed to be a constant a complex constant now the last two properties that we have seen are the additivity and the homogeneity if a system satisfies both of them then the system is said to be a linear system. So let's introduce the concept of what is called as a linear system. So a system is linear if it is both if it is both homogeneous and additive we have seen that the homogeneity property says that the scaled input should produce the scaled output whereas the additive property says that the individual inputs must result in 
if we add two individual inputs we must get the output also to be added and the output must be the addition of those outputs that have been resulted from the output of the individual inputs so if we have both the homogeneity and additivity we get a system that is a linear system we can club both of these properties the additivity and homogeneity in single equation so i may write it something like this so we want a system to be both the homogeneous and additive so we may say that the system must satisfy the following a x1 of t plus b x2 of t must give you a times y1 of t plus b times y2 of t here you may see that we are giving the input as scaled and added versions of the individual inputs x1 and x2 and at the output we expect the same scaling factors a and b so you may see that the the factor by which the y1 is getting scaled and the factor by which y2 is getting scaled is the same as that of the input scaling factor so here both the homogeneity and the additivity is taken care of such systems are said to be satisfied what is called as a superposition so a combination of both the homogeneity and the additivity property leads to what is called as a superposition or linearity property let's take a couple of examples here example consider a system say y of t equals to say x square of t is this system a linear system let's check that we can infer that this system is a non linear system but let's prove that so here we can see that in order to prove a system to be linear it must satisfy both the homogeneity and additivity property and we can readily observe that this system is not additive because we may see that if we give x1 of t you will get y1 of t to be x1 square of t and if you give x2 of t it would result in y2 of t to be equals to x2 square of t and if we give both of them together x1 of t plus x2 of t this would result in x1 of t plus x2 of t whole square and we can see that this is not equals to if we add individual outputs y1 of t plus y2 of t that is equals to x1 square of t plus x2 square of t so the system is not additive you can say that the system is not additive what about homogeneity this system is is this system homogeneous well this system is not homogeneous so we can readily observe that from this equation that the system is neither additive nor homogeneous so it is not homogeneous that we can readily observe from this equation that if we scale the input 
so the output is going to be c square into x square of t and if we scale the output it is going to be c into x square of t so those two are not the same so this system is neither additive nor homogeneous now if either of these properties fails then the system is said to be nonlinear so the system is nonlinear let's take another example say y of t equals to say x of 2t is this system a linear system so in order to check that we must verify both of the properties the homogeneity and the additivity so if we check for additivity imposing the additivity condition we can easily see that if we give x1 of t that would result in y1 of t equals to x1 of 2t and if we give x2 of t that would result in y2 of t equals to x2 of 2t and if we give x1 of t added with x2 of t that would result in y1 or we can say that the addition would be x1 of 2t plus x2 of 2t and this is equals to y1 of t plus y2 of t so this system is additive now let's check for the homogeneity for homogeneity homogeneity we simply scale the input so after scaling the input say c times x of t would result in y of t equals to c times x of 2t and this is we can readily see that this is equals to c times y of t so if we simply scale the output say c into y of t we are definitely going to get c into y of t equals to c times x of 2t as both of these are the same we may say that the system is homogeneous Now as this satisfies both of the properties of additivity and homogeneity we conclude that this system is linear So in order to satisfy linearity it must satisfy both the additivity and homogeneity if either of these fails that system is said to be nonlinear So so far we have seen six different properties and we said that the last two properties combines to give us what is called as linearity property and we may see that each of these properties are independent of each other meaning a system can neither satisfy none of these properties or might satisfy all of these properties so all of the six properties are independent of each other 
in this course we are most bothered about the last two properties that are additive and homogeneity that means we will be discussing more about the systems that are linear in nature we shall see more into linear systems in the next module thank you